hydrodynamic analysis of loaded floating dry dock in waves. This is part one of several parts of this series of videos. Note that no floating dry docks are designed for operations in waves, but in salvage operations it's an opportunity possibly to use a floating dry dock in open ocean conditions. Low, frequent, low freeboard results in trapped water on deck, as you can see in this video going on here. The trapped water induces large healing moments. Water sloshes across the pontoon deck. Large heel and pitch angles occur in quite low waves. Wing walls, typical of floating dry docks, easily become overstressed and can fail and most of what I'm going to show you in this video is time domain simulation using Orcaflex. We'll call this the floating dry dock example and you can see in this picture there's a pontoon deck which is light green with a blue color underneath it. There's a ship, in this case it's the Seawall Ferry under salvage the dry dock is the Yangwu 13200 and it's got a red top and these wing walls which are white below the red tops. There's gaps through the wing walls. This is a replay of sloshing or roll motion I should say with sloshing. You can see the sloshing of the seawater coming across back and forth the deck here, but that's not true sloshing, that's just what would in fact be instantaneously wet when these angles were reached. This is a 1.5 meter regular wave height, equivalent to a significant wave height of only about 0.9 meters. Um, but if you get the period right, and this period is running at about 8 seconds, the motions are quite violent of this system. This is a bigger sea stay, and the waves are about 3 meters. They are 3 meters regular waves. The response is irregular because of the sloshing water effect and this is equivalent to about a, a three meter wave is um, 1.9 meters significant roughly and you can see big motions up to 11 degrees negative and 12 degrees positive um, from this relatively low wave height. This is now a significant wave of about 3.1 meters characterized by a regular continuous wave of 5 meters, 8 seconds period, a very large response, negative 19 degrees to positive 27 degrees. There you go, there's the big one with a massive amount of water sloshing effect occurring. Note the deck going dry there, then note how much it submerges up here. Remember that's a, about five meters lower pontoon. Um, these kind of forces would break these pretty flimsy flotation caissons. The, um, the structure here is not strong, it's not intended to resist this kind of motion at all. Here are some approximate dimensions. The vessel is longer than the dry dock, the vessel is green, the dry dock is 104 meters long, the salvage ship weight is about 10,000 tons, and the combined displacement of this system is 19 and a half thousand tons, about.
Note that it's pretty low freeboard, 1.3 meters on a, a 5.1 meter total um, pontoon deck with 3.8 meters of draft. The ship in the center, the, the wing walls on the sides, the wing walls top to the bottom of the pontoons, 28 meters and the width of the whole assembly is about 48 and a half meters. One of the main concerns of wide barge type vessels with side walls, even though these wing walls are intermittent, is the water gets trapped on deck and if there's longitudinal beams, as in this case, uh, water gets trapped between these beams it's a dynamic sloshing situation and we're going to put some sort of magnitudes on the dynamics and the statics of what's going on. This is not an exact science but possible trapped water snapshots can look like this where the blue is representing water that's on board this dry dock. This is a plan view and it's deeper on one side during part of the roll cycle. This is pitching and rolling at the same time. So we get some idea of being able to quantify the amount of water in the next slide or two. This slide's a little complicated, but here we're comparing the healing moments. The healing moment from trapped water is shown as the blue line that increases pretty steadily and its effect is based on the heel angle plotted along the x-axis and the moment can be read off on either side y-axis. So for example at a heel of three degrees with an assumption that 60 percent of the width of the deck is got flooded water and 50% of the length of the deck is flooded water. Rough calculation. Um, there would be uh, a moment causing overturning of about a thousand ton meters. And that would be equivalent to the same moment you'd get if you look at this orange line, which is the wind healing moment. Now the wind healing moment is plotted with the x-axis along the top. So the same moment of about 10,000 ton meters caused by a three degree roll with this water distribution would be equivalent to having a wind of 100 knots uh, or over 100 knots. That gives you a rough idea of the effect of this water on deck. The hydrodynamic model in this case is begun with a series of orcaflex line elements making up the dried up pontoon. The added mass coefficient can be non-isotropic and modified line element by line element to capture the theoretical added mass in heave and roll and pitch, which would all be different, and that can be obtained by separate calculations. It's important that we use the sort of elements because they are going to go underwater completely. Here we look at the hydrodynamic model, again without the water present, we see we can get, we've got, I've put in four chain moorings to keep it stable for these analyses. All the line elements are connected together at this 60 red buoy and uh, this is a shaded graphics view that gives some perspective. Now I've built in the, the wing tanks also using Orcaflex line elements which are basically cylinders that have buoyancy mass stiffness properties and I'll be surrounding these with a pretty picture later but this enables the whole say one corner of this structure to go on the side and everything would have the right buoyancy effect. Um, the red 
cubes at the corners are simply 60 buoys with negligible properties and they're used for tracking the freeboard and some other uses. Here with hydrodynamic model 4 or stage 4 we see that I've hidden the pontoon line elements with a blue orcaflex shape um, and I've shown the sea surface now. Now this stage I've added the the, the 3D graphic of the floating dry dock and hidden the tank line elements with this graphic. The graphic is just pure visualization. Now the model's looking pretty good for demonstration purposes because I've added the graphic, the 3D graphic of the ship, the seawall. And it doesn't do anything like the other graphic objects, it's just for display. All the hydrodynamic and mass properties are elsewhere in the model using the Orcaflex rule components. The water on the deck, um, this is the beginning of the model. It's in this case used use, using uh, this green object which is a 6D Orcaflex buoy and I'm simulating anywhere between a thousand and four thousand tons of mass in this object with some inertia representing the water that comes on board that I see in analyses without the mass being moved and then I permit the mass to move it all it's constrained by this slider bar uh, you see the end of the mass here and you see a line drawing of the system at the end there the previous slide mentioned the nonlinear spring stiffness that's part of the hydrodynamic sloshing mass in the system. So this is a, a variable um, in Orcaflex which you can define in this case I'm using a nonlinear spring that goes from negative 60,000 kilonewtons uh, tension for a strain of negative 100% and positive 60,000 kilonewtons for a strain of positive 100% and it's almost flat in the middle. I can discuss that in later presentations. This is a brief wrap up on how the um, the the sliding mass and inertia represents the sloshing water with a nonlinear spring and here we see in operation I've removed the ship model um, from the graphic so that you can see this thing sliding and here is the time history of roll and you can see that um, strange effect induced because of the um, extra frequency term induced by the sliding mass of quite significant size. So back to the water on deck model again, having seen it moving, this would be the natural decay curve if we didn't have water on deck and this would be the natural decay curve for one of the cases with water on deck. Um, we can look at that slightly differently as a pure frequency domain plot. And this is the effect of water on deck model 5. Just simply a fast Fourier transform response spectra, power spectra, without the moving water sloshing, showing it's got a roll period of um, about 8 seconds. And with the moving mass, you've got the roll period having quite a lot of energy, but quite a lot of energy also seen associated with the, the moving mass that seems to correspond to um, a, a much higher, lower frequency, longer period. Not unexpected and depends on the tuning of the, the mass and stiffness properties. As a wrap up, the hydrodynamic analysis of a loaded 
flooding dry dock in waves has been described. Again, no floating dry docks are designed for operations in waves. A low fleet freeboard results in trapped water on deck. The trapped water induces large healing moments and it sloshes across the pontoon deck, inducing particularly larger roll motions. Um, these vessels can have quite large healing pitch angles in quite low waves. This roll particular can be exaggerated by the water sloshing. The wing walls can easily become overstressed and fail in waves. And I've shown this using time domain simulations with Orcaflex. I've only shown a very few cases. Um, 